Well, hello again. It's Paul from Ski Instructor Academy. I'm here with Andy from Snow. Well, hello again. It's Paul from Ski Instructor Academy. I'm here with Andy from Snow Camps Europe, and we're going to talk all things ski again. Um, it's becoming a bit like the the Peter Runrig podcast because oh, it's another the, Peter question. It's another Peter question. You know, oh. he comes up with such good questions. And also, I think he, he may have just started listening to us, and so he's possibly not caught up with the back episodes because this, this question we've sort of answered once before about skis and it's about any thoughts on using shorter skis as we get older mm -hmm. into the 50s and 60s especially at the non-expert level your age then i have read a few articles promoting this um idea mm. um first of all i would say yeah i mean peter you can read articles promoting any idea. You could also read articles promoting why you should use longer skis when you get older. Um, it just depends on what, what the Google Analytics want to push on you. But um, the articles obviously are taking into account the fact that there is this big movement arm stuck on the bottom of your feet and it would make some sort of sense. And if anybody's ever had the opportunity to, um, maybe it's not the right word, to ski on ski blades type thing, mm -hmm. you know straight away how easy they are to spin and to, to turn around mm -hmm. because there's not as much surface area, you know, catching and contacting with the snow. And therefore the argument would be that a, a shorter ski will be much easier to turn. Of course, the stability... Once again, and I've mentioned this about splaying your feet out, etc. The bigger something is at the bottom of your feet, the more stability that would think. Think of a ski jumper landing mm -hmm. with those huge skis they've got. You know, that's to give them. You know, they couldn't do that and land on a pair of blades. <laughs> the, 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 there's a there's a pros and cons. Now, if you are a non-expert skier and tend to ski a little bit slower, mm -hmm. therefore having a shorter ski could be of advantage to you. What do you think, Andy? Well, there's a couple of things, isn't there? And I suppose we've not read the, that article, but it could have been saying that if you want to carve at an old age, take a shorter ski, because inevitably carving on a shorter ski would be easier than carving on a longer ski because the radius would be shorter for one. Um, and it would be lighter. But as you've just said, it could be flapping all over the place. Um, but yeah, if you are... And in fairness, if we pick up that, because before you move on, if that shorter ski was like my fist slalom ski, I would say, no, Peter, you should not use that shorter yeah, ski. Yeah, it different. depends more on the stiffness mm -hmm. and the, that how a, that ski is manufactured because a fist slalom ski, so let's say, Peter, you're talking about probably getting a ski of about 165 or 170. My fist slalom ski is brutal mm -hmm. if you put it onto somebody's feet. And mm -hmm. that's a short ski. Yep. However, the same ski detuned, you know, whether you buy that's the soft version of it, perfect. Yeah. Because it's a softer ski. It makes yeah. a difference, Peter, the tension, the torsion, sorry, in the yeah, ski. Exactly, yeah. And I was gonna I was gonna mention that. And then the other thing is it, it's it's how how do you want to ski? And you you're saying, okay, not a high performance skier, but how do you want to ski? Do you want to carve down on rails, shorter ski? Do you want to have more of a skid and carve? Then I I would say well, slightly longer, slightly longer ski. Mm. Um, the other thing you mentioned about your, a short fist ski, what a lot of people will say who aren't racers or fit skiers is you can't ski on them all day because you'll just be knackered. Yeah, um, and and potentially get knee pain, knee which we covered also, yeah. we covered on one of the other podcasts. So yeah, yeah, yeah it's kind of w w without knowing what the article was about. And um, what we said a couple of weeks ago, I went to shorter skis this year. I'm in between 50 and 60. Um, but I didn't go onto a shorter ski because of you that. You mean height? But I want, yeah. <laughs> but I, I want to now go back onto a longer ski because I haven't enjoyed that shorter ski as much as I thought I would. Sure you would, yeah. And it's not been as versatile as I yeah. would like it to be. Um, and again, if, yeah. if, you're, if you're in Australia, I'm going back to um, Tom Guiley, um, he said that a lot of them, their ski shorts. He never gets his second name right. <laughs> I don't even think he watches. Um, he watches every episode but with, never, with popcorn. Never, never once sent me a message. Um, 
uh, as he said, in Australia, a lot of people favour a short ski because the runs are narrow and, and relatively short. So it's it's more enjoyable and you can't necessarily right. ski, ski, a, ski a, a bigger radius ski. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it really, really I depends. find that, it, that Peter's got a point here because this is where we get a situation where people do watch and copy. So, you know, the, the world's full of that, isn't it? So they see their stars skiing on... 190 World Cup fist giant slalom 30 meter radius skis mm -hmm. and think they've got to get them because that's the ski to have to look how wonderful I am mm -hmm. but of course what then happens is they end up making super G style turns like literally like 50 meter radius <laughs> turns down the piste and that's when accidents can happen mm -hmm. um, whereas encouraging somebody first to get the grips of something like a shorter ski and being able to make carving turns it is difficult when you step up to the next level because you need a little bit of patience the turn feels slow it you know it feels long and slow but then trying to get that ski to bend and to influence the turn of that shape ski or that size ski then step up if you want to but i just do worry that people sometimes put these big long skis on their feet with big radiuses and they just can't control them and yeah. that, that's i would rather see them on a shorter ski yeah and I suppose for Peter, if Peter's thinking about buying a pair of skis and he's thinking about buying it based on this article, is is don't buy a pair of skis based on that article. Buy a pair of skis based on your skiing on those skis. So go in resort and try mm. try a short ski, try yeah. a, uh, one of these kind of middle-of-the-range skis, 175, 15-metre radius skis, and then try something a little bit longer. And again, we don't know how tall Peter is, but let's say 179, 180 with... 17.9 meter radius and and see what you like i think the big question you get because i had i've got obviously in argentina people coming down and some, some of them are about actually in about mid 60s coming down to argentina and the guy was asking me about oh, am i all right bringing my i think the word dina star ski and it was about a 85 or something under the waist and i think a lot of the time this is where the confusion is the length of the ski is one thing, Peter, but the waist of the ski is probably going to have a bigger effect on this type of skiing. Um, so getting a, a shortish ski at 170 centimetres or 175 centimetres or something, which is still you know relatively short um, for an average man, really what you've got to be looking at is what, what is the waist? Because are you in a resort where you get a lot of softer snow powder and stuff like that or you're in a resort where it's really hard packed and icy in the east side of america or something mm -hmm. like that um that's going to make a huge difference so the question peter probably should have been um what's your opinion on the waist measurement of a ski and that and i've mentioned before and andy just mentioned there can have a big bearing on your tendons and your your ligaments and things that can have you know negative consequences to your knee joint if you start skiing on wider skis continually on hard packed pistes mm -hmm. yeah and that again the the the, the, the waist width is going to change the uh radius isn't it Oh, absolutely. And, and and I think if a lot of people, when they think short ski, think slalom ski. But you can still have a short ski that's got a bigger radius than yeah. a slalom ski. And again, it's what do you want to do? Do you want to just make very short turns? Do you want to be able to do a little bit of everything? Or do you just want to make long turns? Yeah. So my, my, my question to Peter would be, you know, what waist are we talking here? Um, and is this short ski article based upon, you know, more like a, a slalom ski? Or is it an all-mountain ski? Or are they even talking some sort of soft rocker? Because yeah. that's the other thing. You can have a rocker ski, which is 190 in length, Peter. But actually, touching the ground is barely 1 meter 60. Because yeah. the, the, yeah, the rockers are so soft. Yeah, the, yeah. the rockers folded up that much that actually contact with the ground is very minimal. It's just under your foot. So it's still really easy to turn. And that's what happened with the ski industry, Peter, is they looked at this and thought, well, hang on a second. Rather than people having to buy a slalom ski at 165 when they get older, they can still enjoy a longer ski at 178 or 180 centimetres. But what we'll do is we'll have a rocker camber. And we'll, we'll have a camber in the ski like the slalom ski has, Peter. But at the front, we're going to create more of a rocker to make the initiation of the turn easier. And that 
was a clever idea for a lot of people because it was almost like the same idea as us getting our fist giant slalom skis and detuning the tip by 10, 15 centimeters so it doesn't grab at the front so much. It just didn't bite. And that biting when you first initiate a turn can really throw people out of their turn and, and, and upset them when they're skiing. So having a slight rocker on the tip of the ski can help as well. Now, when we're in Argentina, Peter, we'll be skiing. I, I sent a message to the, to the guy in the, the ski shop in Argentina asking if my skis were still there from two years ago because I thought they would have sold them. Um, and he, he sent me a picture back anyway. And there was two sets of skis here. One was a Fisher Curve. Yeah. And one was a, an old um, Volkl slalom ski. And I was thinking, oh, I, I probably don't have to bring some skis. There's also a pair of my boots there, which look like a Technica 130 from about four years ago. Um, and I thought, you know what it is? I'm probably not going to take any kit at all. I'm going to just ski on all this old crap. And the servicing will be terrible because it's Argentina. So I'll have to try and go out and do a little <laughs> bit myself. But... It'll put me on the back foot a bit where I don't have like the latest kit, the latest boots, the latest skis, and I'm forced to ski on what I ski on. But um, I know Gary will be there with his and he'll be, I'm sure he'll have his slalom heads and his, his 70 metre heads or something, you know, and his head boots. Um, the other guys that I know, the Austrians, they tend to have their Fisher kit. And Fisher, Fisher boots are quite heavy. Um, so we'll have a lot of equipment out there. And it'll be interesting to, to talk about it on the piste um, as to what we think about the, the, the gear as well. So this is a really interesting topic, Peter, um, because it's, it is subjective and it, 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 it does depend a lot, you know, on a lot of things. Um, but maybe I would be more concerned about, is this a, an all mountain? Is this a proper slalom? Is this a, like a fat boy? Yeah, yeah, what what is of, this what, for? What, what short ski were they talking about? Yeah. Now, here's a question, and it's still, it's kind of on, on, on piece, let's say. Um, your thought of testing skis to use on a mountain in an indoor setting? Why would anyone do that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just there was there was something that popped up on a page the other day where they were testing skis um, in a, I, in a yeah. ski, snow dome, ski dome right. place. And I was thinking, well, someone else actually said to me, what do you think they're testing them for? What characteristics are they looking for right. that they can identify on a... 100 meter indoor yeah. snow slope and I kind of thought about it and was like mm, you're not really going to get a feel of what it's no. going to be like out on a mountain are you it's like taking a car for a test drive unless you're test driving it for at least a day or two you're really just going to drive it up and down the street and go oh this feels wonderful compared to my older car yeah you can't really tell on a 100 meter slope that is actually designed and made from a snow quality that doesn't even map or you know match anything on the the actual real piste don't get me wrong i mean if you get the opportunity to do it great go out and test a few pairs of skis why not when you're out there if it's a bit of a fun day out but i wouldn't take anything from that no. no, I couldn't see it being... And especially, again, the biggest issue always is, is, you know, how is the skis serviced? Like, this is the issue. My, my concern with going to Argentina and picking up my skis is not that I can't ski on the Fisher Curve or I can't ski on my slalom skis. It's, it's like, can I get... Have the, has the base been left in such a bad condition that actually the, the ski's screwed? It's, it's knackered, you know? Or is it is the edges the problem or something, you know? And so when you come to test a ski, if it's just straight out of the box, I would say a lot of them skis don't even get it. A service done before they even give them out. Yeah, it'd be factory factory wax and a factory edge, wouldn't it? Yeah. Whereas when I pick up my skis from Brundle Sports here, before I even step on them, they've already put them in for a hand service for us. Yeah. And that's the issue I have. I'm spoiled. Um and that that you do get used to that absolute perfect surface of the ski and perfect base that when it, when it's slightly off it just feels raggy. It just feels horrible. Mm. But I think it's a great um, question, Andy, that to me, um, I wouldn't personally waste my time testing skis in that environment. But if that's the only thing that people have, I understand fully why they would want to do that. Um, but it's not going to tell you that much. Mm. 
I don't think so. Um, but Andy's right as well, Peter, that if you get the opportunity um, to actually go off and try out skis, that might be the best option for you before you commit to um, to buying stuff. Um, as we've said, think more about how the ski is stiffness and how the ski is waist thickness. Mm -hmm as opposed to the length, because rocker and camber can have an effect on the length. And not all skis nowadays are manufactured purely with a camber. They do have this rocker, this ease of swing. You see it a lot in women's skis nowadays mm -hmm. um, to make the turn initiation much simpler for people to do. Good one, though. A very, very good one indeed. Um, there is one more that I wanted to do, um, and it's from Goggle, uh, from Marshall, about toppling the turn. But I think I'm going to leave that till when I'm in Argentina, because it makes more sense that Gary and I go, yeah, yeah. go through this about uh, actually on snow with that type of thing. Um, and apart from that, that takes us up to date for the summer, Andy. Is anything else going on? Or we're going to be, by the time I get back, it'll be into... It'll be almost winter, won't it? Um, yeah. for, from, from our side, handling bookings, getting people booked in, getting people set for the December camp, which we are running and that you are running. Yeah. Um, it is filling up very nicely. It, it can't fill um, if people are worried about slots. What I would say is get booked on sooner rather than later, as we said in the other podcast, because prices are going to go up and up and up. So book on now, but don't worry. If we need a third group, a fourth group, then we've always got then the Paul's got all the instructors in the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we've got the team there. I mean, especially at that time of year, you know, there, there's sometimes up to 35 trainers up there. And, of course, that allows us to um, spread people out in the way that they're not stuck in the wrong standard, yep. which is obviously one of the, the biggest issues with, with smaller companies and stuff where they're trying to yeah, manipulate costs, basically. They mm -hmm. want to try and pack everybody into a group. And there's nothing worse than that when you're frustrated because it's too fast or frustrated because it's too slow. So um, that, that is an add-on. And, and on top of that, I hope this year with the, with the camps as well, for those that I know that do come out and that are interested, we can get back into doing little gym sessions to show some stuff in the gym. And we can also do some little um, presentations and things that might help from the biomechanics side and stuff that when people are interested in, uh, they can come along. Of course, when it's a camp, it's not compulsory if you'd rather just go out and apre and dance on the bar. Have Shall we get this? Richard to bring his stairmaster? Oh, well, yes. Have you ever seen one of them? Actually, Julian was saying, should we get a stairmaster? Because yeah, he knows that I like a stairmaster. And when we go away, it's the first thing, like if I'm in a hotel, I go, oh, I've got a stairmaster. Oh, I've got a stairmaster. Stair I'm going to jump on the stairmaster. And um, he's going to, because our, our, our ceiling's really high upstairs and it's about four metres high. He goes, it'll fit there. And I went, yeah, but he's seen the size of them. I mean, they're oh, big, massive big machines. Like, Jesus. <laughs> I said, look, you just have to walk them down the stairs a lot. <laughs> just run them down the stairs a lot. So, yeah. But uh, maybe make the Stairmaster a bit more challenging. Carry a kettlebell. There we are. That, 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 that'll make them work. Oh, put a, put a rock sack in. Carry a kettlebell. Of, of what? Yeah, joking, the, the, that'll the, kill them. The stairs move, don't they? <laughs> You've got to move up with the stairs, you know. You, you can't just... You have to step up. Oh, so yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, get it. Yeah. Well, you put it... You could put, but like, a backpack Surely on. you just turn the intensity of the stairmaster up, no? Uh, you can. You can You can go up... I think it's 20 or something. And that's actually banging along, like... Don't carry kettlebells, because yeah. you'll just end up with really long arms. <laughs> well, you fall off the back and you'll break. <laughs> you'll break. But, um, yeah... The Stairmaster. Love it. Love it. <laughs> right, guys. Right. See you in Argentina. Bye for now. See you now. Bye. Adios. Amigos. Was that Spanish? <laughs>